Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today of the 2024 Hyundai Tucson SEL Convenience, finished in a new exterior color, well, new for the Tucson anyway, and that is Hampton Gray. So for 2024, the Tucson remains mostly a carryover from its introduction in 2022. With that being said, there were a few additions here specifically to the SL convenience trim, including the 64 color ambient LED interior lighting, as well as the larger 10.25 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation. Now, if you know Hyundai's infotainment systems, then you'll know that that means this no longer comes with wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, only the wired type of connectivity. Now, rumors are swirling that there may be an update pushed out to some of these vehicles in the future to support that. But as of right now, just note that there is no longer wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay here with the larger infotainment system. Now, another small change in terms of packaging and features is now the SL Convenience is the first Tucson trim level to get the LED tail lamps out back. Now, formerly this was standard on the SEL and higher, but for 2024, Hyundai decided to take that away from the base SEL and now add in the SL Convenience package. Now, in addition to those changes for the convenience package in specific, there were some changes across the board for standard safety features, including the addition of the seatbelt reminder, rear side airbags, rear outboard seatbelt pretensioners with load limiters, as well as the steering wheel haptic feedback. Again, standard across every Tucson in the lineup. So these are some great changes for Hyundai to start making. And when it comes to exterior colors for the Tucson lineup, like I mentioned, the Hampton Gray is now newly available on the Tucson lineup. Amazon Gray is now a hybrid only color and intense blue, if you're looking for that color, is going away about halfway through the model year. And I believe in late November, early December timeframe, which should last in terms of inventory into at least Q1 2024. But I would definitely recommend trying to get one a little bit earlier uh, because that color may be hard to come by uh, the farther into the 2024 model year we go. Now, finally, when it comes to pricing, the Tucson across the board did see a price increase, some trim levels a little bit more than others. When it comes to the SEL trim in specific, this now starts at $34,735, including destination and all-wheel drive, and this represents a $1,150 increase over 2023. So with all that information in mind, let's not waste any more time. Take a look at what this SEL convenience all-wheel drive has to offer with nearly $1,000 of additional accessories uh, for the mid $35,000 price point. So the Tucson in front of us, once again, is finished in the Hampton Gray exterior with the gray h -Tex leatherette on the inside. Now, Hampton Gray is very popular across every Hyundai model um, in which this color is offered, and I see the Tucson becoming very popular in this exterior color as well. Now, the front end of the Tucson has remained pretty much the same from its introduction in 2022. I fully expect a refresh to come out in the next model year, so it will be interesting to see what Hyundai does with the design. But overall, you will find full LED lighting up front standard across all Tucsons with your LED reflector headlights, both low and high beam here on the convenience package, LED daytime running lights spanning the edges of the grille with the LED turn signals in that upper corner right there. Now, some of the lesser trims will have the dark gray metallic finish here in the center section with the bright chrome Hyundai emblem located in the middle. You do have your adaptive cruise radar sensor located off center right there to the left side or the passenger side of the vehicle uh, next to the license plate there. And the SL Convenience also has the silver accent trim that runs across the bottom of the bumper with kind of the standard black plastic faux looking skid plate design um, at the very bottom edge. You do have some aerodynamic treatments to help airflow around the wheels and tires for better aerodynamics and fuel efficiency. Coming around to the side of the Tucson, you will find the standard matte black plastic trim around the wheel arches with a little integrated design just behind the front fender there. Now, if you do want the body color trim, that is only going to be available on the end line. Coming to the wheels and tires, these are gonna be the same 19 inch alloy wheels found on the top limited and of course here on the SL Convenience. They are a dark gray machine finish wrapped in 235, 55, 19 inch Michelin Primacy AS all season tires. Very high quality all season. I do appreciate Hyundai using the Michelin tires here for the larger wheels. Coming to the mirror caps, these are gonna be body color with your LED turn signal integration. No puddle lights or cameras on the bottom of this particular one, but they are gonna be heated and it does have blind spot detection. You have proximity entry with Hyundai Digital Key on the front door handles. This is only the Hyundai Digital Key 1, which supports Android compatible devices. Uh, if you've been following along with some of my other videos, you'll know Hyundai is rolling out Hyundai Digital Key 2, which also supports iOS, but unfortunately that has not been rolled out to the Tucson quite yet. 
Up top, you do have the silver accent trim that runs across the top of the windows. Um, the standard black plastic here on the B and C pillar trims. You have the standard black roof rails up top as well. And the convenience package also does add the single power sunroof, not the panoramic type like the limited as well as some of the other hybrid trims. And there is your gloss black shark fin antenna out back. Now coming out back, like I mentioned, the SL Convenience is now the first trim level to get the nicer LED tail lighting signature. Um, I really do like this aspect of the Tucson because it does span across the entire width of the vehicle. And of course, it does have that crisp on off um, light up feature when you do depress the brake pedal. Your turn signals and reverse lights are located here on the corners of the bottom of the bumper with the kind of parametric designs in the plastic. More of that silver accent trim that expands across the entire rear bumper with kind of those diffuser fins at the very bottom. Of course, you do have your rear backup camera located just above the license plate. Integrated chrome Hyundai emblem behind this plexiglass material. And if you're wondering where the rear wiper is located, that is located up in the spoiler to keep it out of any elements or snow and ice or buildup. Uh, so that is a very nice feature that the Tucson does have. And it definitely cleans up the entire back end of the design and uh, keeps the rear wiper, like I said, hidden from the elements. So overall, that's a look at the exterior of the Tucson. I'm sure you guys have seen many of my other videos or just any of the other videos on YouTube. Uh, but overall, the only thing new thing about this exterior is going to be the Hampton gray color. So with all that information in mind, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the window sticker so you guys know exactly how this one's equipped, and then we'll jump onto the interior. So take a quick look at the window sticker. The Tucson SEL Convenience is a package on top of the base SEL. So in the convenience package, you get things like the 19-inch alloy wheels, the LED tail lamps, HTEX interior, power sunroof, the dual 10.25-inch cluster, as well as the infotainment system, um, auto-dimming interior rear view mirror, and the advanced rear occupant alert that uses the ultrasonic sensors. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this one does have nearly $1,000 of additional accessories, which brings the total MSRP to $35,660, including destination. Now take a quick look on the interior. Like I mentioned, this one has the gray HTEX leatherette on the inside. If you're interested in a black interior, that is also going to be available here on this trim. Now starting out here on the door panel, the SEL Convenience does not have the more premium type of door panel like the Top Limited, um, as I've hinted in some of my previous videos. So unfortunately, Hyundai did not add that back to this particular trim level, but it does still have the 64 color ambient lighting. Up top, you'll find a kind of soft touch textured material with the gloss black trim that runs in the top of the dashboard. The gray interior does give you the two-tone effect with that center section that is going to match some of the seating surfaces as well as the center console and the dashboard. This section right here is going to be soft touch padded for your elbow, and then this is going to be a kind of cloth type material uh, that once again runs into the dashboard. Power windows, mirrors, and locks with automatic front two windows, silver accent door handle pull, and a good amount of storage down below with, like I said, the 64 color ambient lighting in that door pocket right there. This one has the standard six speaker audio system. Coming over to the driver's seat, this is gonna be a power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar. And there's the h -Tech's material here for the seating surfaces. No accent stitching, but it is going to be perforated. And there's a quick look at the two-tone dashboard. Now here on the inside, the SL Convenience is going to be mostly unchanged from the previous model years uh, with the addition of the larger infotainment system. Now in front of the driver, you're going to find the 10 to quarter inch fully digital cluster that is controlled here on the right side of the steering wheel. Uh, like other Hyundai models, it has your digital speedometer on the left, tachometer on the right. The center section is going to be somewhat programmable with that steering wheel control. It has all of your trip information, MPG, put your all-wheel drive settings, your navigation up here. Um, and control some of the other vehicle safety systems, but overall very easy to read, and I do like how it is implemented here inside of the Tucson. Coming back to the steering wheel, this is gonna be a black leather wrap steering wheel with your black accent stitching. It does have some silver bright work to kind of break up all of the features, and as well as the bright chrome Hyundai emblem, not the stainless steel that they have been rolling out on some of the refreshed and all new models. Audio multimedia here on the left side, and all of your cruise control and other safety systems here on the right side it does have lane fall assist, smart cruise control, and uh, blind spot detection, of course, among a few other items. Automatic headlights with auto high beam assist. Regular wiper stock here on the right side. To the left of the steering wheel has your gauge dimming, power trunk, as well as traction control off. And there you can see some of that cloth material that matches into the door panel, as well as the lighter gray interior surfaces here for the dashboard. Of course, that will all be black if you choose the black interior. 
Now coming over here to the infotainment system, this is gonna be the one main change for the 2024 model year here in this trim level. And that is the 10 and a quarter inch infotainment with built-in navigation and wired and auto wired Apple CarPlay. It does have Sirius XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth inputs as well. Same overall UI layout, so no new features there. Um, so it's gonna be the same as the XRT N-Line and the Top Limited in the previous model years. And I really did think the eight inch screen was a great uh, differentiating factor versus the lesser trims Tucson's uh, because it did retain the wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So I know some people out there are gonna be a little bit frustrated by this change, but hopefully there is going to be a software update and support in the future for wireless here on these larger screens. Um, you do have the Hyundai driver profile, so you can customize that. You do get Blue Link Plus here in all 2024 Blue Link equipped vehicles, so that is free for the lifetime of the first owner, and expanded benefits for CPO and used vehicles as well. Uh, but overall, paired to that larger screen, you do get the full touch type here for the dual zone automatic climate control instead of the partial um, physical with the knobs and dials for the temperature, which is now found on the base SCL Tucson. Below that, you do have USB-A ports, both charge and data, wireless charging pad, as well as your Hyundai digital keypad down here, 12 volt charge outlet, and a little bit of additional storage space. Here's the shifter for the eight speed automatic transmission with a leather wrap boot. All wheel drive center differential lock, so you can send power 50-50 front and rear. Hill descent control, auto stop start, electronic parking brake. You can pull up your backup camera down here as well on that larger screen, as well as the engine auto stop start on off. And here is your drive mode select. This does have normal, sport, smart, and snow drive modes, and it does change the digital cluster and some of the layout there. Two fairly sized cup holders. It does have the proximity key with the remote start and the um, physical metal key built in, so that is very nice. Heated front seats, they're gonna be three stage, no heated steering wheel. Softly padded armrest with a little bit of additional storage space inside, no ports or lights, unfortunately. Up top, you will find the lighter gray headliner and pillar trim to match the seating surfaces. There's the Vandy illumination, auto dimming interior rear view mirror, no garage home link. Blue Link SOS overhead LED lighting and that smaller power sunroof like I mentioned, uh, which does give you the overhead LED lighting. That is something that is not found on the XRT because it does not have the sunroof. I'll go ahead and open it up for you guys just to so see how far it does open. You can see it is very small, but again, the footprint of the sunroof is fairly small and it is good for lighting in a little bit of additional light, which is good for front seat passengers. And one small change for 2024 is the addition of the rear seat belt indicators, uh, which are these three displays up there. So basically it will tell you if anyone is not buckled in the back seats, if there is an occupant back there. So very nice safety feature that they have been adding in their vehicles for 2024 and uh, should be available mostly across the board. Now take a look in the back. Most of the materials are gonna follow through from the front on the door panels. So as far as that goes, you have the hard touch plastic upper, same cloth insert with the light gray accent for this interior color. You do have a fully hard touch door panel armrest, which is a little bit unfortunate. You do get the soft type and the top limited uh, with the nicer premium materials. Small bottle storage in the door as well. Here's a look at the seating surfaces. They do have recline functionality on both the left and right hand side, which is one of the nice aspects of Hyundai SUVs. Step and height is very easy given the door opening and overall ride height. And there's a quick look at the center dashboard. In terms of rear seat amenities, you do have rear AC vents as well as two USB-A charge ports. Mat pockets on both of the front seats. Seats do fold down 60-40 split, recline like I mentioned via those levers on the sides. You do have the black accented seat belts. Center armrest with two integrated cup holders. And there is the rear occupant alert which uses sensors to detect movement inside the vehicle after it is shut down to alert you via the Blue Link app as well as sounding the horn and light. So a nice safety feature. In terms of the overall footprint and space inside the Tucson, it's one of the nice aspects given it is one of the larger compact SUVs in the segment. I have at least four or five inches behind my rough seating position, plenty of foot room down below, and headroom is going to be a very strong suit as well uh, with three, four, five inches of headroom. Uh, plenty and that's with the seat in the mostly upright position. So overall, if you're looking for a larger compact SUV, uh, the Tucson definitely has you covered. Now in terms of car capacity, this is gonna be one of the strong suits of the Tucson as well, uh, given the overall physical size and the available space out back. You can see behind the second row, you have a ton of car capacity and the load floor is quite low uh, compared to some of the other SUVs on the market. 
bunch of the accessories are currently back here in the packaging. On the left side, you do have a light with a 12 volt outlet. You can fold down each of the sec row seats here on the left and right side respectively. Here's the integrated soft kind of pull out cargo cover that can be adjusted depending on where the seat is adjusted to. And there is a good amount of storage beneath the floor. And there you can see the integrated spare tire with all of the roadside toolkits and a little bit of additional storage space on the left and right hand side as well. So overall, very good space here in the back seat, uh, whether you keep the seats upright or fold them down for even additional storage space. Uh, so if you're looking for a nice two row SV with a good amount of size, the Tucson definitely gives you that. So wrapping up here on the passenger front seat, all of the materials are gonna be the same as the driver's side. You do only get a four-way manual seat, so no height adjustment here on this particular trim. And there's a better look at the dashboard with all of the two-tone materials. In terms of the glove box, it is going to be damped and it does have illumination inside. You can see there is most of the original owner's literature and is a very good usable size indeed. So overall, that's a quick look at the interior of the SL Convenience. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what powers this particular vehicle. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. So under the hood of the standard Tucson, you're gonna find a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine, which puts out 187 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque using the front wheels or all four wheels if you do select all wheel drive. And this is paired to an eight speed torque converted automatic transmission. So overall, a fairly traditional powertrain here in the base or the normal versions of the Tucson. Of course, a hybrid version is also going to be available uh, with a substantial increase in power uh, with a 1.6 liter turbo engine and electric motor. And those are going to be all wheel drive as well through a six speed automatic transmission. So you do have a variety of powertrains available, but overall, the standard powertrain does move around uh, without much issue. So that's going to do it for my quick walk around tour of the 2024 Hyundai Tucson SEL Convenience. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and or found something helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel in these videos. Subscribe if you guys are not already and make sure to stay tuned and check out some other Hyundai content I have here on the channel, including all of my 2023 model year videos on the Tucson lineup and upcoming 2024 videos as well. Now, not much has changed as far as the 2024 models. Like I said, if you do wanna know everything that changed across every trim level, make sure to check out the dedicated changes video I have on the channel, as well as, like I said, the previous 2023 videos, uh, given there were some different color combinations. So if you're interested in seeing how those look, those are gonna be very relevant as well. And as far as my quick thoughts on the SL Convenience trim in specific, while I do maintain my stance on it of being a very nice uh, feature pack trim while staying on a relatively affordable budget, uh, like I mentioned, it does have most of the limited exterior styling, including the 19 inch alloy wheels, the LED tail lamps and stuff like that. You do have some minor differences in the front grille design and a few other tweaks on the exterior. Make sure to check out my side-by-side -side comparison of these two trims uh, that I did last year if you're curious about all of the differences. Uh, but anyways, with the larger screen for the this exact trim. I think it is still a very good value. It does suck that you lose wireless Android and Apple CarPlay, um, and it did go up a little bit over $1,100, but if you're looking for a mid $30,000 compact SUV, you really can't beat it in terms of features and amenities, given it has most of the available safety systems from Hyundai, dual zone automatic climate, heated front seats, the Blue Link app services, and the list really goes on. Um, I think in terms of a physical size, it's a great option as well. Now, with that being said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Curious to hear your thoughts on the SL convenience or just the Tucson in general. Do you like the changes they made? Do you miss the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay on this one? I know there were a lot of people out there that watched my videos that did purchase the SEL Convenience just because it was the highest trim with the smaller eight inch screen. Uh, but of course that is no more for 2024. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate the support here on the channel and hope to see you guys in the next one.